Seven boxers currently in jail and the reason why. Clifford Etienne. Ever heard of Mike Tyson, Nikolai Valuev, and Francois Botha? Well, Clifford Etienne faced them and other boxing big shots at one time, punching at these fellas with all of his might and heart. Clifford was born in March 1970 to a poor family and growing up had his nose buried in books. In high school, he joined the football team and seemed to have a promising life ahead of him. And then he got roped into an armed robbery case and gifted a 40-year jail sentence. In prison, he undertook a career change from football to boxing and was crowned the state prison boxing champ. Etienne was released in 1998 after 10 years on account of being a model prisoner and went pro soon after being paroled. His pro record stands at 29 matches fought with 21 by knockouts, plus four losses and two draws. Clifford Etienne was so good during the early years of this century that comparisons to George Foreman and Joe Frazier were rife. He seemed to be doing well for himself, handing out impressive defeats to Lawrence Clay Bay and Lamont Brewster before surprisingly losing to Fresno Quendo in March of 2001. He made up for this with a series of wins before facing Mike Tyson in 2003 and getting knocked out in the first round. His next loss and final fight was against Nikolai Valuev. In August of 2005, Clifford Etienne was arrested on attempted murder, robbery, and kidnapping charges, with these crimes being committed while he was high on coke. In June of 2006, he was given a 160-year sentence without parole that was later cut down to 105 years. Wowza, I'm gobsmacked. Reggie Gross. The six foot four inch Reggie Gross was professionally active from 1982 to 1988. This Baltimore native fought with boxers large and small and is mostly remembered for that time in 1986 when he went toe to toe with the then teenage and pre-champion Mike Tyson and never backed down till Iron Mike knocked him into the twilight zone with an earthquake left hook and won the match. Reggie here last fought professionally in June of 1988, getting knocked out in the second round by Donovan Ruddock. Reggie Gross, apart from being a professional boxer, is also a convicted murderer and was an enforcer who worked for a rather violent drug gang in his neighborhood. In the year 1989, he was found guilty of taking three people down and was given three life sentences, with two of these running consecutively and obliged to serve 30 years apiece on two of these life sentences before gaining parole eligibility. He's due for release in November of 2048, but that's contingent on his keeping his nose clean in the slammer for the duration of his sentence. Evangelos Gusis Vangelos Gusis is an Australian boxer and kickboxer and not too many have heard of him. He was born in Uzbekistan to Greek parents and came to Australia at the age of 8. Gusis is the winner of the first ever Lionel Rose Shield. In 1987, he qualified for the 1988 Summer Olympics. From boxing, he went into kickboxing and very quickly made a name for himself in that genre. Getting so good, he was regularly being mentioned in the same sentence with other great kickboxing greats of that period and becoming the middleweight kickboxing champion in the World Kickboxing Association. Gusis soon made another U-turn and became a professional boxer. He only fought three times, winning twice in the first round and drawing once, and mostly earned his keep by associating with gangland figures, collecting debts and tributes. In May of 2004, Gusis fatally shot a relatively low-level underworld figure and then claimed self-defense. At his trial, the jury failed to buy this explanation and he was found guilty of murder. He was also found guilty of another one, and this having happened in March of 2004 at the Posh Brunswick Club located in Sydney Road. His sentence for the latter was announced in February of 2009 and it consisted of life in prison with parole possibility after 30 years. James Butler this guy used to go by the nickname of the Harlem Hammer, and these days is mostly remembered for his November of 2001 charity bout against Richard Grant. No, the Harlem-born James did not win that match, but was so peeved about that loss that he sucker punched his opponent, injuring him. For this, James faced a second degree assault charge and spent four months at Rikers Island at the expense of the American taxpayer. James Butler fought professionally as a super middleweight and later as a light heavyweight a total of 25 times, winning 20 of his fights, 12 by knockout. His last fight was against Omar Shelka in August of 2004 and he'd lost this by split decision. On October 27, 2004, James Butler was arrested for the October 12, 2004 murder of Sam Kellerman a noted freelance sports writer who had been his good friend for a decade plus and with whom he'd been staying for a while. James was alleged to have been angered by the victim's insistence that he find another place to stay and committed the act before burning the apartment. In March 2006, the ex-boxer pled guilty on arson and voluntary manslaughter charges, avoiding jury trial and a sentence of at least 34 years, and in April of that year was given 29 years and 4 months in jail and fined nearly $40,000. Avdantal Herzides 
Mercedes is a Georgian who was thrown into the slammer and told to make himself comfortable for a decade. The guy is relatively petite at 5'4", but with 33 fights won from his 37 professional fights, he's certainly no pushover. This fella held the WBO interim middleweight belt in 2017 and was the 2011 IBO champ. In case you're wondering, Abdaldo Herzides isn't some itty bitty journeyman, but a world class champ who's consistently competed at the highest level of pro boxing. In April of 2017, he KO'd Tommy Langford to set up an epic slugfest with Billy Joe Saunders. This fight was said to take place in London on the 8th of July 2017, but on the 8th of June 2017, Herzides, as well as a few others, were scooped up by the feds in New York, with all accused of being members of a vicious crime syndicate, and Herzides in particular said to be the main enforcer. What? On the same day, that Erdcides was arrested, New York prosecutors charged him with a conspiracy to commit wire fraud and racketeering. The next year, he was found guilty and given 10 years in jail to reflect on his crimes, plus two years of supervised release. The sentence effectively ends Herzides' pro boxing career, and it came just a month after the stocky Georgian had been stabbed at a metropolitan detention center in Brooklyn by rival gang members. But Vondel Herzides is in a New Hampshire prison at the moment and reportedly doesn't like his new digs or the occupants all that much. Dale Crow. This guy's alias is The Crow, and we're guessing he got it for his ability to put folks to sleep in the ring, and not from any singing talent. Dale Crow is a southpaw and a former tough man champ. His most remarkable fight left his opponent damaged for life. That opponent was a former WBA heavyweight champ named Greg Page, and the March 2001 fight was one of the most poorly organized ever, with the ringside doctor being an unlicensed quack. In the closing seconds of the fight, an unbalanced page was pushed into the ropes, suffering a dreadful whiplash that resulted in a brain bleed. He went into a coma shortly after and was not attended to by a doctor or qualified medical personnel for over 20 minutes, before being taken to hospital in an ambulance and suffered a stroke on the operating table. He never fully recovered, being paralyzed on the left part of his body and was wheelchair bound for life. Dale Crow was in early 2006 arrested for a killing that had occurred four years earlier. The victim was his friend who ended up being stuffed into a trash bin. Dale was charged with murder, aggravated robbery, and aggravated murder. He was eventually jailed for 20 years after being found guilty of aggravated robbery and involuntary manslaughter and engaging in corrupt acts. Gervonta Davis the rest of us can comfortably look over our nose and see nothing, but when pro boxer Gervonta Davis does the same thing, he sees a possible seven-year jail sentence. And that is so sad for a guy who, most agree, is one of the best boxers in the world at the moment. Born in November of 1994, Davis is the WBA lightweight champ since 2019 and the WBA super featherweight champ since October of 2020. He's held other championship belts and has a 95.8% knockout to win percentage, and according to BoxRack, is the second best active lightweight pugilist on the planet. Tank began his boxing career when he was five years old, had a peerless amateur career, and won a couple of junior Olympic medals and the Golden Gloves in 2012. His first pro fight was in February of 2013, and he won this almost without breaking into a sweat, and his career has since then been following an upward trajectory that seems to be more vertical than oblique. <laughs> Davis, who is a pretty boy Floyd Mayweather protege, is a marvelous boxer who taps into his rage and talent to beat his opponents into the middle of next week. But obeying laws meant for us common folk is clearly not something that he feels he should have to do. The guy's been in trouble for a while and in September of 2017 was arrested on first degree aggravated assault charges after punching a wheelchair bound friend of his before this later changed to second degree aggravated assault. The charges were later dropped after Davis and the victim kissed and made up in the courthouse. In February of 2020, he was arrested on domestic violence charges. Then, on March 22nd, 2021, he was indicted on 14 charges for running a red light in a Lamborghini SUV, smashing into a Toyota Solara, and then fleeing the scene. The latest charges could send Davis to jail for seven years and 55 days, but only if he's found guilty. Click on the playlist to the left to binge watch more celebrities and sports stars currently rotting in jail, and the reasons why. We'll see you there.